hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I have released the floozy. Uh, so this is a small crossbody bag with one, two, three, four, five zippers. Uh, and in here we've got a magnetic snap. And then in the top, when we open it, I've also put a slip pocket. Um, so I through this video I talk about different alternative things that you can do uh, For example, you could add a second pocket on the like a sixth zipper pocket on the inside But I felt like five was enough. This is currently my everyday bag not this one, but a green version of this one um, Yeah, these are also optional, but they're fun And I think they just give it a little something extra so I talk about those as well um, I've used hardware on the side, so I've used D-rings and swivel clips, but you can just use a rectangle ring and get rid of, like, half of that hardware. So, if you'd like to see how this is made, keep watching! Alright guys, so let's get started. Um, we always start with these little fun accents. Now you can skip them, they're not essential to the bag, but I do think they make it look adorable. And the reason we start with it is because we have to edge coat them. Um, so what I actually do is I only cut two and then I just cut an extra piece that's going to make sure that they fit the two because it's easier to cut two and then cut around them than it is to cut four and then match them perfectly. You might still have to trim some. If you've got a cutting machine, that would obviously be more helpful and I would obviously do all four. But I do have a cutting machine. I didn't set it up. So I just do the two. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape along the back of them, like so. And then peel the backing off and lay them with the short edge in line with the short edge, like along this bottom bit here. Peel off the second one, and I'm just going to stick that on as well. I'm going to try not to make them touching. I want a little bit of a gap, right? So now I've got the two on here, I can stitch. Right, so I've got my black thread in that is for bag making. I actually had the wrong black thread in, but that's all right. So now I'm going to top stitch along this edge. So I want to have a top stitch length of anywhere between three and a half and four. You can choose what that is. And I'm just going to do two back stitches and then I'm going to slowly go around this curve. Because I'm using a contrasting thread, you want to really make sure that this looks neat because you will see it if it is not. And then I'm going to back stitch, and then instead of cutting that off, I'm just going to slide over to the next one and go again. So again, stitch, back stitch, just a couple of stitches, nothing major. And I'm going to crank around this curve so that I get it neat. It's all about neat. And then back stitch. Trim off those tails. And then get my vinyl cutting scissors, which for me are the Class A knife edge. Um, I like all my scissors, but they all have purposes for different things. And then I'm just going to cut around this so it matches the other one. And see? Perfect edges. We're going to repeat that to the second one. Obviously, why would we not? Round and then trim down. Now we will actually, we won't actually use this whole thing, but I'm still going to edge coat the whole thing because it's not very big. So the easiest way to not get dirty is to put a clip on it like this. And then I'm going to open my edge coat. Now this is just from eBay. Um, it's actually all in what I assume is Chinese. I can't read it, so I can't actually tell you. But I've had no issues with this. I know some people love the branded ones, and each to your own. So this is my little edge coat spreader. This end actually twists around quite freely. So I'm just going to dip it in to the edge coat and then roll it along that edge. Now, if you've got a lot of separation, you may need to first fill this with glue. I know some people do. I 
if I have to fill it, if it's more than two layers, than this, like this one, I will fill it with a PVA glue and then put the edge coat on top. But for this tiny little accent, it's going to be fine. So I'm just rolling the edge coat along the edge until it's all coated. Funny about that. I'm not worried about the very end, but that has now got some nice red edges. So you can't see the vinyl parts. Now I'm just going to clip this onto my zipper jig to dry and we'll do the second one. So the reason we do this first is by the time we get up to attaching them, the edge coat will be dry. So you don't have to do it like half an hour ahead or anything. As long as we do this bit first, you'll be fine. And I imagine because it's such a little thing. Just roll down, make sure I got the very tip there. Always have a rag handy so that you can wipe your fingers on it because it does get a bit messy. So there's the second one. I know it looks shiny now. It'll get better. And I'm just going to clip that one to another part of my zipper jig. You can also, what I usually use actually is the cord for my light. I usually just um, have that closer to me so that I can clip it to the cord. But anywhere where the edge paint won't touch anything will be fine. And then I can just wipe this clean. You can also run it under cold water. If some edge paint does get stuck in the grooves, you get an old toothbrush to clean it out. Right, so now that that's done, we can go on to the sewing. So I'm going to start with my strap. Now I'm doing a different strap to the pattern. The pattern just says fold this perfectly in half and stitch it to have a nice thin strap that will fit in all hardware. I, however, because I'm doing such a crazy bag, I wanted to do the little racing stripe. So the racing stripe is just a quarter of an inch, no, half an inch thick, sorry, not quarter of an inch. So that will go over the join just to have a cool extra little something. And then I'll be stitching the red with a black thread so that will also be an accent because apparently today I am all about the extreme stuff, which is fine. So now I'm just gonna pull part of the way off with the double-sided tape backing and then bring these into the center and join them like that. So you just want to make sure that there's no gap and that you've um, pushed them perfectly flush. And the easiest way to do that is to bend both sides into the center and pinch it and then push down. Or at least that's what I found the easiest way. Now I used to be quite slow at this. If you go watch some of my older videos, it takes practice. Uh, but once you've got the skill, it's definitely quicker than the other way, where you do one half and then the other. Uh, this is the basket weave vinyl, for anyone that's wondering. I don't think I've got any in stock at the moment, but I should probably get some more pretty soon. It comes in a bunch of colours. I mainly only stock the green and the black. I think I can get maroon and silver and navy. But I don't think I liked the blue that they had from memory. So I'm just continuing on. Now if you find that your vinyl won't stay stuck down, score it by rubbing it on the edge of a table. What that does is further creases the side parts um, so it will stay down. Because certain vinyls just do that. They don't love me as much and they won't stay stuck. But that's no reason not to use them. Right, I'm going to flip that around and now work back the other way. Like so. So we get all the way to the end. And again, rub it on the edge of the table. 
So if you want to, you can put some double-sided tape on this and stick it down. I'm just going to hold it. So I'm going to pop it under the machine and I'm just going to start an eighth of an inch from the edge of the red. I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch. So you can do this stripe however thick you want. I like half inch, it's easy to cut but it's still thin enough that it looks really fun. But you could have even done three eighths of an inch if you wanted it a little bit thinner and more racing stripe-ish. And I'm just going slowly because I'm readjusting it as I go. So I'm using my fingernails to hold it in the center for the most part. Alright, and then I'm going to go across the bottom because I'm going to hide these stitches anyway. Bring the whole thing back and then back the other side. So the other side should be quicker. That noise that you can hear in the change of the sound of my machine is my black thread getting stuck on the spool. It's getting close to the edge and apparently this spool's just doing that. See, did it again. It just gets a bit tight. Alright, so I'm going to back stitch, pull it out, trim off those tails. Like that. And then we might as well finish off the strap while we're here. So I'm going to grab my strap ends, my swivel clip, and I forgot to grab the strap adjuster. Hold that. And the strap adjuster. So the first thing I want to do is put the strap adjuster through the strap center. So I want the plain side touching the center part. Then I'm going to install the strap end so it can't get stuck and then I'll rivet it down so that nothing gets in my way. So in a bag you get two strap ends and four like mini screws. So I'm going to use my mini electric screwdriver. I got this on eBay. Uh, the end is minorly magnetized but nothing major. So I'm just going to slot this onto the end. Theoretically. So I'm going to go left to right and slot it on sideways so that the strap end is now on. And then I need to grab a mini screw and my screwdriver. And it is minorly magnetic. So then I can just hold it and screw. Now you can obviously put these on with a hand mini screw. There's no reason you have to buy one of these. I just do a lot of screwing so I decided an electric one would be more fun for me. Whoopsies. So I'm going to grab the next one and then screw that in as well. It always takes about another one turn after it can't screw any further. And so there you go, strap end on. Now I can pull this back down and I'm going to put a rivet here to hold that on. So we need our two mil hole press. I only have uh, one size like hole press like this, that's the small one. So this is a two mil. I know they come in a few different sizes. And lots of people ask me which one I've got. So that's why I'm telling you. I'm not just being weird. And then I'm going to put a rivet through. And then clip it onto the back. Like that. Push it together so it won't fall off. And then I'm going to grab my other cam press. And squish it. So that is now 
one in complete. So I'm going to come chop off this excess red I've got at the end because that's not needed. So I'm going to slide on my swivel clip with the flat side towards the blank side, making sure that it's not twisted. I am then going to put it up, down, so it goes through the adjuster strap, and then, oops, onto here, so it goes through there, and then I'm going to put my other cap on. So I'm going to slide it across because of the different thicknesses. Now I can't do that without looking. I was trying to show you, but it turns out it's way harder to do than you think. So slide it across sideways, and then I'm going to grab another screw and just screw it in. So they're, they're pointy and sharp enough to be able to screw through your um, vinyl until you get to the very, very end. Right, final one. So they're pretty easy to install and they do look really nice. I really like how that's coming out. Right, so that's in as well. We're all finished with the screwdriver. Now again, I'm gonna fold it over and then I'm gonna add a rivet in here. So the edge is gonna have like a nice amount of hardware. Um, when using these strap ends, I don't think I would ever stitch it down. I think I would always use a rivet for this. So we're just going to grab the hole press. And yes, it is quite heavy lifting them up and down, but I don't have enough space where I am to show you everything all the time. When I'm not recording, these live behind me on the overlocker table and I can just swivel my chair around and punch the holes and then swivel back. Which actually might be an idea if you make bags for a living to have everything kind of around you with a swivel chair. All right, so I'm gonna squish that one on. And your strap is done. So you can now just go and pop that aside. We don't need that until you want to use your bag, really. And you can make straps like this just to sell separately if you do do stuff. Or you can do like um, generic colors and then just have one strap that you change between all of your bags so that you end up making less straps. If you are conscious about how much sewing costs, which I probably am. All right. Next, we're going to move on to the gusset and base. It doesn't really matter where you start in the pattern. I started with lining, but you don't have to do that. So I'm going to stitch this across there, making sure that we back stitch at both ends, and then come and trim the ends. And then I'm going to do the same with this end. So I'm stitching them on before I attach my D-rings, just because I am. Right, trim off the tails. Now, I am going to split this open so that it's flatter, and I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch each side of the seam. Now, if you're using a domestic machine, this is very advised because it's going to make this seam lay a lot flatter and be a lot thinner than if you were to push it all to one side. So that will help with your final stitch up. You'll also notice that I have no interfacing on any of the vinyl. The size that this bag is doesn't require any. The only interfacing I did was on the lining because I used a woven cotton. And on my front panel, I use my Violene 1050F, or what I call hefty. Because it's all just a bit of a mouthful, really. Right. So now that's stitched. It's just subtle, but it's going to keep that sitting super flat. All right. D-ring connectors. So we've got two. You've got two options for these. Well, actually, you've got a lot of options, really. Anything you can dream up. But 
You can stitch these to the outside or you can cut a slit and slot them in. Um, on the Harry Potter version of this bag that I did, I was doing a video and then I forgot to hit re record for like a good chunk of it and I just didn't notice. So that was going to be the video and now we're doing this one. Uh, but on that one, I cut the slits and tucked it in. But because I'm doing accent colours and I'm all about this fun, bright contrast, I'm going to keep these on the outside so that it looks cool. Because why not, really? So I'm still folding both sides into the centre so that I've got no raw edges on the edge. Um, it also makes it thicker and more durable and can take more weight because you've doubled it over. If you're using cotton for these, make sure you interface them as these are taking the whole weight of the bag and everything that people put in them. So I am going to not stitch them because I want to stitch them on the outside. So I'm going to grab my D-rings and the side where the join is goes along the flat side and then I can tuck them like this. So I'm going to add some clips to hold it where I want it and then that's going to stitch to the outside. If I had have made them a little bit longer I could have just used two rivets to pop them on but I don't know if that would hold. If I had have made them four inches long we could have just put um, two rivets there and there and top stitched around it without being attached to here. So that's another option for you as well. All right, so I'm going to measure down how much we need to go. And I might even put some double-sided tape on the back so that we can help to hold it in place. You just need a couple of little bits. Double-sided tape is your friend when working with vinyl. So I'm just putting a little bit in the back at the middle. I'm just going to squish it on there and then peel the backing off. And I find that my fake nails don't help with this at all because they're too thick. So I usually use the pointy part of my snips, like the edge of the blade, to peel off the back. It's what I personally find the easiest. Right. Now, onto there, like that. Push it down. Now I'm only going to stick one on because it will probably move while I'm stitching anyway. And while I'm still on my decorative stitch length, I'm going to stitch around it. So I always start at the edge where the hardware is so that I know that I'm going to be butting up against it and I won't overstitch the sides. Needle down, pivot. And I'm going to come down on an angle. I'm going to do the crisscross because why not? I really love the crisscross. And I didn't get my fill of doing it on the straps because we use strap ends and rivets. All right, and then I'm just going to go down both sides as well. And across the bottom a second time because somewhere's got to go twice. And then back stitch. Trim off those tails, and I've now got this fun little crisscross. And again, you don't have to do that, you could have just stitched around the edge. If you make your straps a little bit longer, you can just rivet them on. If your machine can't stitch through this many layers, or you could cut a slit and slot it in and then rivet it down. Oops, that didn't stitch because the thread got caught again. It's like when it wound, it got itself a burr of itself. Um, but I, hopefully it'll either fix itself or it'll run out soon. Could go either way. Take that clip off. Stitch. I'm going to chop off that tail because it's in my way. 
Then we're going to go down diagonally. And then up. So you've got an hourglass. You could stop at the hourglass shape if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm not. I'm Because I've already done it on the other side. And because I think it looks cool. Make sure you get that edge one right into the corner. Otherwise it won't look even. And then up the last side. When you get back to the top, back stitch. And then pull it out. So for the rest of the bag, you're going to want the D-rings to be pushed down so that they're out of the way for later stitching. Um, and then while we're here, I'm going to find the center of this because we're going to need to do that later. And if I remember to do it now, I don't have to do it later. So I'm just lining up the seams that I did and then snipping a little bit at that crease. So that piece is now centered. I've also got the lining, which is the same pieces again. So I'm just going to stitch those together. Like that. Trim off the tails. And I would have cut that too short. Back stitch. Back stitch again. And I'm going to find the center of this one as well. Because we need, basically, we need to find the center of all the pieces. So you could even at the very, very start, go and mark the center of everything. Pop it in the tub. Okay. Now I'm going to start with the back piece, which I know seems silly, but just bear with me on this. So you need your back piece. I've put my logo on the back um, because, A, it wouldn't have stood out on the front of the panel because of the cool fabric I used. And, B, I like my logo to be a little bit more subtle. That's just my choice. We also need one of our Tory Pocket um, pieces. The reason I call it the Tory pocket is this is the size pocket I put in pretty much every bag I make. It's the same size for all of them because it works for pretty much all bags. So I'm just going to iron that crease because I've turned my iron on this time. I remembered my iron which is I'm very impressed about. Never happens. Then I'm going to use my zipper template. This is part of the zipper swatch set. I just keep this one out because it's my most used one for the reasons I just told you. I'm going to draw around the edge like so. And then the way I line this up is, again, I'm going to find the center of the bottom of the pocket. Because centering everything is just easier. This has already got it from where I put the embroidery design on makes it much easier and then I measure one inch up from the bottom and it's my pattern so I'm allowed to give out measurements if I feel like it one inch up from the bottom and center it with our little marks and then I'm going to put a clip on each corner so it can't move and that's how I measure where that goes you can measure it from the top but it's trickier so, now I'm going to stitch just the long lines of the zipper pocket. I recently did this and I like it better than stitching the short ends as well. So I no longer stitch the short ends of my zipper pocket. I need to go back to adjoining stitch length. Stop it. Get to the end. Back stitch. And then I'm just going to fling it around without chopping off that tail because I can do it later. I'm going to stitch, I'm going to back stitch, and again to the end and back stitch. Pull that out, trim it off. So now I just have the two lines. I also need to trim the tail at the opposite end. So you get this. Now, a couple of ways you can cut this open. I am going to fold it onto the edge 
because I didn't bring my rotary cutter over. And I'm just going to make a little nick and I'm going to put my finger on the edge of the scissors as I do it. It helps to push through the vinyl when you're trying to snip with the very ends. And then I'm still going to triangle out the corners the way I normally would. One and two. Same to the other end. So I'm trying to cut roughly in the middle. I haven't marked it. I don't feel like marking it. It's fine. I'm just triangling out those corners. So you want to get as close to the stitching as you can without actually snipping your stitches. So now I'm going to take this pocket and I'm going to finger press it so it's flat against the vinyl. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same to this side. Now this helps with the next bit and because it's vinyl you obviously can't just chuck an iron on it. And then we're just going to push that through and I'm going to do the same thing where I hook my thumbs into the sides to push them out. And then I'm going to roll this down with my fingers and you can finger press it but I don't love your chances so you can do the Tory squish and just kind of wiggle along there. And that will help to crease the vinyl and keep it down. So that will be enough that I will be able to do the rest by hand as I'm stitching the pocket in. So I'm just shaking it back and forth. Now the reason we're doing this one first is because this is the one where the zipper gets put in the opposite so that it will face the others. Because this is the back piece, I want all my zippers to finish on the same side. So we're going to grab one of these zippers. So one of the, we've got three the same size, then we've got one smaller one and your top one's larger. So I'm going to, instead of facing it to the left like I always do, face it to the right. And the reason I started with this one is probably more for my benefit than yours so I don't forget because I have that fun little habit of forgetting. And then I install it and have to unpick an end and reverse the zipper direction. So now I'm lining up the edge of the zipper tape with the edge of my fabric and I'm just pulling on the lining so that it's not showing on top. I'm going to go back up to a decorative stitch length because I want this to look pretty and I could have even changed to a red and done like opposite colored stitching which would also look cool. And then I'm just going to stitch along I'm going to zip past where I've already sewn. Now I'm using this hand to pull the lining so that it's not showing from the outside. And this is how you can do this without having to iron near your vinyl and potentially wreck it. Needle down and now I, even though I'm going up the side I'm still going to pull this top bit so that the corner's nice and then I'm going to turn. Now sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of the lining poking out. I have made bags where it looks really cool, but this is not one I want to do that for. Pull it out. Needle down, and then I'm going to open that zipper so I can finish it off. And then back stitch. I'm going to trim off these bits and then if you pick this up your pocket should pretty much just fall perfectly in place so I'm only going to stitch the sides shut and I'm going to go back to adjoining stitch length we're going to back stitch of course and then stitch down the side now the bigger the seam allowance you use for this the smaller your pocket will be. So that's just something to think about. I'm using about a quarter of an inch if anyone is interested but you can use more if you want to. And I just ran out of bobbin thread. All right let me do another one. Uh, bobbin is rewound and I also oiled my bobbin case because I wound a new bobbin and that's what the machine guy told me to do. And you can hear the difference I swear. I'm just going to pull that out and so that's the back of the bag done. So the pocket goes the opposite way 
But when you're wearing it, they'll all go the same way. You just need to trust me on this. So, let's move on to the lining. So I've done one of my, um, my slip pocket piece I've done in the outside fabric because that's apparently how I'm designing it. I got really excited about this fabric, so it's just going everywhere it can. So I'm going to fold it in half right sides together and then just break the thread, apparently. This is not the best roll of black I've ever owned, I'll tell you that right now. I do hear a lot of people have issues with black. It's the first time for me. Alright, so we're going to go down the side. Now if you wanted a bigger slip pocket, you could probably use the bigger um, pattern piece. You could use the Tory pocket as a slip pocket if you wanted to. So I'm leaving a gap roughly in the center so that I can turn it through. And then I'm just going to trim off some of the excess fabric in the corners and the tails so that it'll turn through nicer. And I always cut more than just a 45 degree angle off because that never seems to be enough. So I'm just going to use my thumb to push everything through. Uh, because it's little, I can just use my finger. If this was a bigger pocket, I would use my turning stick, which I love. And then I'm just going to push up like so. And then I'm going to iron that down flat, which you can't see because it's just off camera. But you get the idea. I'm just ironing. I could make everything in view, but then you can't see up close what the sewing machine is doing. Unfortunately, we can't see everything at the same time. So, this side's right sides up and the other side's right sides down, but it's the inside part of the pocket so it won't matter. Or if you've used something non-directional, then it really won't matter. So I'm now going to top stitch the top of the pocket, closing that gap. And back stitch. Trim off those tails. And then I'm just going to eyeball the center. That's pretty much all I'm doing. And I'm going to start on the side using a top stitch. I'm just going to top stitch the pocket on. And then needle down, pivot up the other side. Backstitch like that, and then I'm just going to find the center. So I find the center by putting my little fingers on the edge and just letting my hands fall because they fall evenly, evenly spaced. And you want to start from the bottom and go up. You can also, instead of guessing with my hands, you could use a ruler, you get the same result, whatever you're more comfortable with. And then I'm just going to go around and trim off all of those tails and throw them in the bin instead of on the floor. I have a bad habit of throwing them on the floor. Right, slip pocket is now inside the bag. So I'm going to fold this in half and find the center of everything because that's just what we have to do. Center top, center bottom. And I'm going to grab the other piece. Now, if you wanted to, you could add another zipper pocket here. Uh, but I personally felt like five was probably enough. I personally don't use them all on my bag. There's always at least one that's empty. So six was, for me, a, an overkill. But you could, if you want to, add another zipper pocket in here. Use the Tory pocket like we did on the outside and just measure it up the same and pop it in there. That's your choice. So, lining gusset. We're going to take the bottom and we're going to line it up in the center 
Now, you can clip it if you want to, but I have found that I do much better work if I just hold it and go. So this is something that you may want to work towards in your skill set. Um, it's something that I found that I love, that I can do. And then we're going to backstitch at the top. I'm going to trim off those tails and then I'm going to come back to the center. So the downside to this is there's more tails to trim, but there's no pinning. So I don't know. And I'm just holding it in place. And then as I get to the corner, I'm just making sure that everything is even and lined up. Uh, and this has taken me a lot of time to manage this skill. But it gets there. And then trim off the tails. And then check it from the inside to make sure that you're happy with your corners and there's no puckering. And then we can grab our zigzag scissors or pinking shears if you prefer to call them that. It's your choice. Personally, zigzag scissors is more fun to say. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess of the curves and the whole bottom so that this bottom will sit nicely nestled into the other side when we build the bag. And then just chop it off. You can also, no, actually, I won't bother doing that because of the way we join it. So now that side's on, I'm going to do the other side. So again, I'm going to line it up in the center. And I'm going to stitch. Now don't feel that just because I'm doing it without clips, you have to. Clips are super handy. Uh, when I was originally doing the bag, I did it with clips. I have now just made a lot. But I promise I will use clips on the outside so that you can see. Not all bags I can do this with. Uh, just some of them. You also want to make sure that your seam allowance on the gusset piece faces the same way when you're stitching the bag together because you don't want that. Quickly. Right. And then again, you want to come in and you want to check all your corners to make sure that they all look lovely like so. And then we're going to grab our zigzag scissors again and start hacking. And I say hacking because it's not like I'm doing it terribly neatly. The main thing you want to do is make sure that you're not accidentally cutting inside of your seam allowance because that would suck. Right. Done and done. We're not quite finished with the lining piece though. We still have to put the other zipper on, which is in this box somewhere. Right, so this is my zipper. I'm going to crack the end and then I'm going to fold down this so it's a 45 degree angle and tack it in place. A lot of people I'm sure are going to comment I should use the butler method. I don't want to. I know you can just push it in. Um, but I find that this way is just less thinking when I get up to that. So if I do this now, I don't have to worry about it. It's just done. Whereas with the butler method, you have to get up to a certain point, measure that point, and then make sure that you remember to tuck it in at exactly 45 degrees or 90 degrees. I don't know. I can't maths today. Oh, hold on. What have I just done there? I just tied it around the machine. So I'm going to stitch, I'm going to back stitch. It's just a tacking stitch. You don't need to do heaps of them. Just until you're happy it won't come apart. So like back stitch twice and you're good. Now I can separate this zip. Now on the bag, you can almost eyeball it, right? So this is what I want. If I hold it together, 
and fold it all in half, and this is a very lazy way of doing this, I can then make a little snip, and that is where I want everything to start and finish, if it wants to snip, which it doesn't. So we're going to get out a vinyl cutting scissors because they're tough off of stuff like this. See? First go. So what this has done is it's created a visual for where you want your zipper to start and stop. Now, I want this on the back of the bag. So I'm facing it the way I want, and then I'm going to grab the zipper that's going to end to the left, which is this piece, and we're going to put it right sides up. Now we want it to start at that little mark that we made. So I'm going to baste it. Actually, I'll show you. We're going to clip it to there. And we're going to clip along, moving along, making sure you're not stretching anything. And then when we get to the other mark, we're going to tuck the tail under at a 45 degree angle. Is it 45? Yes. 45 degree angle. I'm sorry, my brain can't do angles today. I really don't know why. Okay, so it is tucked. If I move this clip and I'll hold it. See how it's tucked under? So what will happen is that we don't keep stitching onto the tail. It's now down out of the way. So I'm going to baste that on because I like basting. You can just leave it clipped if you prefer. Nothing saying you can't do that, but I personally like to baste it, especially that corner that we've tucked under. And once it's basted there, it will stay. Right? So then we're going to do the same to the other side. So we're going to get so the raw edge or the edge of the zipper tape where there's no teeth goes against the top of the fabric. We're going to line that up there. And then move down, clipping it as we go. And if again, if you want to, you don't have to clip this. And then when we get to this point, we're going to tuck it under. So this bit comes down 90 degrees, but there's like a 45 degree angle going on there. And then we're just going to base that in place as well. So we don't have to think about it later when we're trying to join everything together. Because the joining and the top stitching of this bag is probably the most difficult part. And consciously being aware of which way your zips are facing, because that's a thing too. So now that that looks like this, your lining is done, so we can pop it aside. And let's move on to all the pockets of the front. So, first up, we want our square pocket lining, and we're going to fold it in half. And I'm going to iron that crease because my iron is on and it's super handy to iron it like that. And then, just like before, wherever I put it, we need our zipper swatch template doodad, which is this one here. Funnily enough, it's the only one that's broken, uh, but that's my fault. I left it out and... I'll let Jessie come play in my sewing room. Whatever. Right. So we have drawn on a zipper box. Now we're going to grab our front panel. So for me is the fancy one. And we're going to open it out so the half that we didn't draw on is at the straight edge like this. And then we're going to get our ruler. And Hold on. We're going to find the centre of both ends because we're going to need that in a minute anyway. So there and there. We're going to find the center of the bottom part of the pocket which is the half that we drew on because this is the easiest way to line it up in the middle. You can measure it. I'm lazy. I just do it this way. So I'm going to line up with a ruler. Just pick any line and I'm going to measure up one inch from the bottom and that's where the pocket's going to sit like this. So I'm just going to grab two clips whoops, and clip one there and one there like that. So now the pocket can't move 
And now I'm going to stitch just the long lines again. So I'm all about this just the long lines thing at the moment. And then fling it around and go up the other side. Trim off your tails, take off your clips. Make sure that you clip the one at the other end, the little jump stitch. It is important. Okay, and then fold it down on the edge. Try and make sure that this is pretty straight because then when you snip, it'll be a straighter line than if that was crooked. So we're going to snip roughly in the middle and then cut out. Now because this one is not vinyl, I can iron this. We're still triangling out our corners. See, and with how long all of this is taking, the edge paint will be dry. So now I'm going to iron up like this and then I'm going to come and I'm going to iron down like this and then we'll pull it through the hole. Because by ironing that that way, it's easier to turn through. It's just what I found. You are welcome to skip it, although I reckon if you try it, you're going to love it. Right, so I've ironed it so it's flat. And then we're just going to push all of that through. And I'm going to hook my thumbs into the corner like that. Because that helps to pull out the sides. And then this should pretty much sit on that seam. And because it's fabric, I can give it a second iron, which makes this a little bit easier. I actually forgot to fill this up with steam again. That's okay. Right. So now it's ironed nice and flat. So we can take one of our zippers. Now I've put clips on these because these ones are all the same size. But the next zipper we use is a little bit shorter. So now I'm going to make sure it goes to the left. Because directionality is important, otherwise you're going to have zips going everywhere. It's just something that you want to think about, so I'm going to keep saying it to help you think about it. So I'm going to stitch down, needle down and pivot. Now I can still see a little bit of that fabric. I didn't quite iron as flat as I thought, but that's okay. I can tuck it under the same way I did before. I'm going to get close to the zipper pull, so I'm going to leave my needle down, foot up, unzip. Needle down, over the edge, and then down the other side. Zip it up. And then trim off your tails. Which if all's gone well, you should have four. Two on the front, two on the back. Right. Now, this should just fold down back to the crease that it had. And we're going to stitch all the way around this. We're going to close this one up. So that another reason I did the other one first is because that's the only pocket we leave open. If you accidentally forget to do that, you can leave the other big zipper pocket open. Um, rather than unpicking everything, but it is easier to turn through the back Because there's no bulk on the back, which is why we do it there But if you have to do it on the front top zipper that we haven't done yet, that's okay Right trim off those tails put them in the bin Voila one I know we've done two now. Two zipper pockets done. So this is the front. We want to grab our lining. 
which is the back part of this zipper pocket and we're going to stitch this now. And the reason we're doing it now is because it'll make the next bit flow a bit better. So we're going to stitch and back stitch, stitch along like that. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to fold this back so it's over the seam allowance and I'm going to go up to decorative stitch length and I'm going to top stitch it down. This is both pretty and functional because it's going to help this to sit flatter, making your bag less bulky. Now we do have a magnetic snap to install, but I don't like to do it yet. All right, so we need the smaller zipper. I can tell that this one's bigger because I left the alligator clip on it. We also want our two zipper tabs. Now these tabs should be a square and they should be the width of your vinyl, uh, the width of your zipper, sorry, as a square. So mine's one and a quarter, but if you buy a different zipper tape, whether it be thicker or thinner, you just need to make sure that these are a square. With that being said, I've already got my zipper pulls on. Uh, so I'm going to make this easier on myself and put a piece of double-sided tape down the middle of both of them. This will just help to hold it on. One and two, like that, just in case you didn't see it. And then I'm going to peel the backing off both. Oops. Fold it in half so it's holding it in your hand even, but just have a little bit of a gap. And then just slot that in and squish it down. Boom. I don't know why I'm saying boom. I apologize. I don't know where I've come up from. It's a thing today, apparently. Right. In half. Push it in. Stick it down. Obviously, we still need to stitch them. But so far, so good. I'm on my decorative stitch length. I'm going to do two forward and two back and then go over and then do the same at that end. Lock it all in. Flip around, do the other side. Snip. Right. Now zipper pocket pieces. Where are my two small ones? Hold that right. thought. The other lining pieces. Turns out I left them over there. I couldn't find them anywhere. So I am going to take my zipper and one of the lining pieces and line it up in the center. So there should be a little bit of extra fabric on each side and I'm just going to base that on because I find it easier to base things. That's just me. So now I want to take with the, the zipper needs to be to the left and I'm going to take the lining piece and find the center like we find the center of everything always. And I'm going to find the center of this and just put a clip like that. So zipper closing to the left. We're going to take the back piece and line up the center with the center and then clip that on like so. And then I'm just going to stitch from zipper tab to zipper tab. So I'm going to flip it over so I can see better with a joining stitch length. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to stitch, back stitch to lock it in. And then as we get to the zipper, we're just going to want to zip it out of the way. So needle down, zip past it like that. 
And then when we get to the zipper tab again, we're going to stop and we're going to back stitch and pull that out. So now we've got this. So I'm going to fold this down towards the, um, the vinyl, go up to my stitch, top stitching, and from the zipper tab, I'm going to top stitch down. Now we will top stitch the rest soon, just not yet. Okay. I'm doing two little back stitches to lock it in, and that's it. You want minimal because we've still got to stitch the rest. Right. So now we're going to take the other pocket and do the same thing. I'm going to zip that up because it helps the zipper to sit straighter if it's done up as opposed to open. So again, I'm going to just baste that on. I know basting takes more thread, but it just, I don't know, I like basting things. Sometimes it can be more fiddly having to clip everything. So if you just base it in layers, it's much easier. Okay. Base that onto there. And then we're going to grab the top. So now when you put these together like this, these should both be closing on the same side. And to line it up in the center, you can just line it up with the edge of the other pieces and then slide it up and clip it down. So it should sit evenly with the other one. And then again, grab some clips and clip it down. Like that. So now it's clipped and then again we're just going to stitch from the zipper tab with a joining stitch length. So I've gone down from my top stitch to a joining stitch. And then when I get close to the zipper pull, I'm going to stop with my needle down, zipper open so that it doesn't distort my stitches. And I'm going to zip the other one down so that I don't accidentally do something bad like that trim off your tails throw them in the bin and again we're going to fold it down and this top piece and then we're going to top stitch across there so from here crank it up to a top stitch And so now everything should be, so far, all your zippers should be facing the same way. If all has gone to plan. If it hasn't all gone to plan and you've accidentally put it on the wrong way, don't stress. Just unstitch this little end. So unstitch the top stitching, the lining, and then the tab. Pull it off, turn it around, and put it back on. It's not the end of the world. But you do want them all to face the same way. It's going to look nicer. In my opinion. Right, so now that we've got this, we're going to flip it over and grab our pocket pieces. Now, sitting like that, they're crooked, but they're not actually. So we're going to line them up so that they're even along the bottom edge. And I'm going to stitch the bottom edge first. Oops, I did not hold on to that very well. Oh, no, it's stuck again. Stop it. I don't think I'm going to do black thread in videos anymore until I'm up to a new spool. I'm not going to throw it out, that is wasteful, but I will yell at it off camera. Not that it, it pays attention to me when I yell at it, but it makes me feel better. Okay. Back stitch. Line at the bottom. So we're going to stitch along the bottom needle down pivot and then we're just gonna pull the sides together so making sure you don't stitch the tab which is the tricky bit which is why we stitch from the bottom up we're just gonna stitch 
the pocket together. Missing the tab bits, that's why it's a little bit wider than. Trim that off. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to start from the bottom again. We're going to go up this side now. So again, you want to kind of maneuver the tab. You almost want to fold it in half so that you can get to everything else. But you can do it when you get a lot closer so it's not as fiddly. And then backstitch. Ha ha. Right, so now a zipper pocket is done up. I now want to take these side bits and just tuck it under so that this is a nice even line. And then we're going to squish the zipper tab so that the zipper is sitting right on top. And we're going to fold under those side bits and clip them together so that there's no raw edge. Now, if that's too tricky for you, what you can do instead is flip it right sides together. So I'll do one of each just to show you. So we flip it right sides together and we're just going to stitch the seam allowance to stitch it shut. Like this. Making sure you backstitch if you're going to do it this way. Right? And so then when you flip it over, you should just be able to push the tab out and then we can stitch all of that shut. So see how that's... We've pushed that out and then we've just got a top stitch across all of it. The other option is, is that you just tuck it under. So you want to pull the zipper tab up first, squish it up, and then tuck everything else down like that and then just clip it. So you get the same effect as this side, but there's just one less stitching, but there is more maneuvering. So that is your choice. I have done both options to show you. Um, well, I've nearly done both options. I'm going to. Give me a second. Right, so we are going to clip all along here. I'm using lots of clips so that it doesn't move, whereas this side doesn't really need clips. But you do want to make sure that the fabric from the zipper pocket isn't pointing out. You want it down in there. Sometimes it likes to be cheeky. And then we're just going to top stitch up to your top stitch length, back stitch, and then up we come until we get in line with the other ones. Now, if you're on a domestic or a machine like mine that isn't super industrial, you may want to hand crank it when you're going over the zipper tab so that you don't snap your needle or wreck your stitching. And then instead of a back stitch, I just went back through the last two holes and stitch that side shut. And then this side, I'm going to start on the zipper tab. One, two, three. Stab it three times, go back through that first stab hole. And then as soon as I come off here, I am going to use my pedal and then back stitch. So now everything should be lovely and lined up. And so now the top stitching goes all the way across the top and we've hidden that little gap. Next, we need to find the center of the back to install the male part of our magnet. So the male part's the part that sticks out. You can use your imagination as to why it's female and male. So I am going to get my ruler, which is here. And I'm going to find the center, which is here. So I'm going to find the center both vertically and horizontally between my stitching. And then I can take my gasket and use that to draw the lines that I'm going to need to cut. So this is why we put the vinyl accent on the inside of this. Um, if you weren't going to use the magnet, you could probably just have this piece the same size as your outer. But I like the magnet. So this, this pocket that we're currently making with the magnet is where I hold my phone. 
it fits great. Okay, so I've cut the two slits. If you've done fabric here and you still want to use a magnetic snap, uh, make sure that you use fray stopper on these holes. Then I'm just going to slot the gasket onto the back and bend these outwards so that it's sitting as flat as you can make it. And then we're just going to, as long as all's going well, we're just going to pull this down and I'm just going to base along the very bottom. I don't have to base the whole thing. We're going to do that again in a minute. Now, if you did a different seam allowance up here and this doesn't quite meet, that's okay. Uh, what you do instead is you make sure that this is as flat as can be. You baste it all the way around and then chop off the excess from the outside because this pocket can just be a little bit shorter. It's not going to wreck your bag. So if you did a different seam allowance or it didn't work out like that, you just stitch it differently and it'll still work. Right. Major front part. Last zipper pocket. So we're going to grab our Tory pocket size. I know I shouldn't really call it that, but this is just, I don't know what else to call it. So I'm going to line this up. Now with my zipper swatches, what I'm actually doing is these lines here, I'm lining that up with the edge of the fold. And that seems to work for me when doing my zipper pockets. It's got enough to fold over without it getting stuck. That'd be why it is a half inch. So there you go. Cool. So now we need our one inch ruler again. We use this for everything. I decided that this was the easiest way to build this. So I'm going to lay it along the top edge and then the zipper pocket is going to sit at that mark. Now the reason that this one goes higher than the other one is because this whole pocket still has to go on the top. And you want to have a little bit of a gap between, let me see if I can pick this up. So if you put it down any further, you won't be able to get into it. So this one, most of them we've measured from the bottom. This one we're measuring from the top. Um, and I just found it easier to do it this way, to be honest. I thought it would be easier for you guys. As long as you've got the right size pockets going on, you'll be fine. So again, two clips to clip it on. And then we're going to start, and we're just doing the long lines. Backstitch. Swivel or pivot or whatever word we want to use. Stitch and backstitch. You still have to backstitch. Oh, stop it. Trim them off, trim the jump stitch, that's what they call it in the world of embroidery, so that's what I'm going to call it today. Flip it back over, and then again, some scissors, and we're going to just, I just fold it over the edge of the table to pinch it, and then we're going to snip in the center. Now I've turned my iron off, because you can't iron the vinyl. You can try and iron it from the lining side. Um, but I do find that I and a lot of other people tend to slip. So the finger pressing option is probably what's best. You'll see that I'm using my finger to push on the end. It just gives that added bit so you're not hurting your hand too much. All right. Another thing you can use to squish this seam, right? So we push it over like this, and then this is like a, a scraper I got from Bunnings. You can just scrape over that to get the crease in it. It's like ironing without heat. And then again, do that side. So then when we push it through, 
I'm going to do this thumb thing like I always do. So just push out. And then I'm going to roll this down so it sits on the edge. And when I'm happy with where it's sitting, again, I can just come and attack it with the scraper. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on the scraper. You might even want to do it from the back. The Tory Squish also works, but I showed you that way, so let's do a different way for this. Pull it down and scrape it. It won't sit perfectly that flat because the vinyl doesn't like to be folded the way it's being folded. I suppose if you wanted to, instead of cutting it like this, you could actually cut the hole out of the vinyl and then just paint the raw edges with the edge paint that would look really cool all right so I'm taking the alligator clip off now that was just so I knew which ones were all the same so again opening it up flat laying it over the zipper I'm pulling out all these edges so that I can't see the fabric and then we're going to stitch two, three, and then you can either back stitch or go back through. Needle down, pivot. I still have to slightly tug on the fabric from the underside, but it's not too bad. Zipper open. Needle down, pivot up the end, pivot around, needle down, zipper up, and back stitch. Trim the tails, which I know I've said like a million times. Can't help it. If I'm talking to myself, I'm doing all the talking. Right. So now I'm just going to fold this top out of the way and I'm going to stitch all three sides. If you forgot to do this with that first large pocket, leave the bottom open here. But you obviously don't need two holes to turn the bag through. That's excessive. And it's twice as much tucking. And if you were going to leave a tag in the last seam, the back pocket's probably better because they're more likely to open that wider than this one because this one's got all the other pockets on the front. That's just my opinion. Or you can do what I do and put it on the back. Some people don't love the whole tag thing. Stitch, trim and trim up there so now we're just going to take this actually no we're not I lied now we're going to come and check and make sure these are dry they are they'd want to be it's been ages uh, edge paint doesn't take that long and it is quite warm in my house I made it that way so I could wear my jumpsuit it's fine I like to pretend like it's summer so now I'm just going to take these and I'm going to line them up in line with the zipper. So you can put them as close. So some people would put them all the way over like this. I have seen this on a bag where they actually cover the zip. I tend to put them about there. But you can kind of just play with that. So long as the um, rivet isn't going to be in the seam allowance, you're kind of good to go. So that's why I've made them this long in case you're that person that wants them to go all the way to the zipper like this. You can do that because I did see it on like a man bag. They had it like this. But I'm going to move mine back about half an inch like that. And then I'm just going to base them down to the side. So there, I'm just going to base it right along that edge. Now there's technically no pocket where I'm going to put this rivet. So there's no pocket in here. You'll just see the rivet on the back, but that's fine. So then again, line it up there. 
Ah, come on, Black. We're nearly there. Okay, so then I can cut off the excess that hangs past it. But I did that deliberately, so you've got more choice about where to put stuff. And I do that for every single one that I do, because even if you miss a little bit of the edge paint right at the edge, you're not going to see it. Right, rivets. Rivet press. But decide where you want your rivet. Punch a hole. I'm going to do both sides at the same time. Um, if you've only got one of these, you could press these and then do your strap now so you only really have to play with it once for the whole time. Two rivets, two caps. So you can push the rivets up from the bottom or down from the top. It's your choice. It doesn't really matter when they're double capped. It only matters when they're single capped or if you've got jewels on them. Because then obviously you want the jewels to show up. Um, I have been looking for the jeweled like rhinestone ones, but I can't find them in nine mil. They only tend to come in seven mil and that's not something that I would really use. So I haven't purchased them. So now, moving back to the bag, you should notice that all your zippers are on the same side. And then when we do this and we put the back the way it's going to be, it's going to be on the same side as well. Look at us go. Now the back one doesn't matter as much. You can have it going the other way and it won't be the end of the world. I just, I like stuff to match. It's who I am. And it was the whole reason I did like a gazillion zips. So I'm going to clip this on like so, around the bend, up the side, clippity clip. I think I've had too much Red Bull today. Actually, I haven't had that much, to be honest. That side needs to come up a bit more. So you want to make sure that this is even. It's very important that this is even. Because otherwise everything's going to look crooked. So I'm going to clip it there. Then work my way down to this corner. Because for whatever reason this corner's got some issues. Uh, but it, again, it's for the amount that it is, it's less than a quarter of an inch that I'm having the issue in this corner. And that could be my dodgy sewing, because I'm too busy talking in the video. Uh, but you're not going to notice that, because that's within the seam allowance. So don't let it stress you out. Okay? So we've got our three beautiful zips. And then I'm just going to baste this on. So I'm stitching within the seam allowance. Basting everything down. Like so. And then backstitch. I also did backstitch at the start. That was very naughty of me. Okay. So, one more thing before we start building this together. We need to put the female part of our magnetic snap in now the reason i don't have official measurements is because depending on everything if i told you to put it in a place and then it didn't line up you'd be shattered that you've already shoved a hole in it so that's the only reason i did it this way so i'm just going to pull this back to draw the center dot so that i can make this line up because if you're using bigger seam allowances than me or smaller this will be in a different spot. So when you cut this, you need to make sure that you lift up your pocket so you don't cut a giant hole through it. I did that the first time. 
lesson learnt and lesson passed on to you. I got a little bit too excited. I had this down. I'm like, yeah, let's put it in. And I stabbed straight through all of it. I mean, it's fine. I could just unpick it and put a new one, but it was still very time consuming. So please learn from my mistake. Pull it up. You can also install this whole front bit before you do this zipper pocket, but I find my way easier, less stressful. Okay. Let's construct Whoops. the outside. So we already have the center here and here. We just need to find the center for this main piece now. So again, fold it in half, clip it like that. And I'm going to start with the back piece because it's less bulky, so it'll be easier to do. So I'm going to line up this center with a lot of clips. And I'm going to make the clips face the gusset, which is important. You should sew gusset up unless you're doing what I did for the lining. Uh, but that is not advised for beginners. I would not start by doing that. I'd feel confident in my sewing and then try and do it without any clipping. So we're just going to clip up. Now, because we're using one inch clips, you will find that you have slightly less of a seam allowance next to this. That is okay. It also depends on how thick your foot is, if it's going to push against it. But again, don't let it stress you because this is getting narrower anyway. So nobody's going to notice if you've done the seam allowance there different. And that purely just depends on how thick your foot is. So I'm just making that known right now before we even start stitching it. Because I don't want you to think that you're stuffing it up. First time I did it, I did a big seam allowance and then I got to here and I went, it's fine. So it's clipped on, all lovely and 3D-ish in the corners. So we're going to start at the fabric and you will notice that it doesn't go all the way up. It's not that kind of bag. Right, seam allowance. There. Clip, stitch, back stitch. Now again, if you need to, Move it this around to make your life easier. Clean up your clips as you go so that you don't feel overwhelmed by the amount of crap around your arms. And then coming up. And then stuff and backs. Oh no, no. That's all right. Here's one I prepared earlier. But I have just pulled all my clips off. Luckily, it's my good end. So I'm just going to do the winging it thing. Every time I pick up a bobbin, I unwind way too much accidentally. It's just apparently my. My issue, they had a knot in it, so I'm just not even going to bother trying to undo it. It's not worth it. Now, if you needed to, go back and re-clip that. I'm not doing it. Okay. So I'm going to just go back over the last three or four stitches that we did. So that will lock in the old ones. And lock in the new ones with the reverse. And back stitch. That's better. All right, go ahead and trim off all your tails. And then check your seam to make sure that you're happy with it. Turn it out if you need to, to check that it's all nice and smooth. If you're happy, we'll get some scissors and we're going to cut off the excess around the curves. Because see here, 
it sits funny otherwise. You don't want that. You want it to sit lovely when we turn it out. Because it's so much vinyl, you will still need to do the Tory squish. It'll be fine. So, now we're going to grab this one. Again, we're going to start at the bottom. I'm going to have the gusset piece facing me so that all clips go up the right way. I'm going to clip the centre and just work our way out. And that seems nice and flat, so on a domestic it's much easier to sew because we thought about that earlier. I mean, it's easier on this as well. Whoops. Clipping up and up and up. And then we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to grab another handful. That was probably too many, but it's fine. up like that you just want to check that it's sitting evenly and you that you've clipped it correctly um and that was a good way to test so you just have a look see even though the bag's got no interfacing i know it looks a bit wonky at the moment but it will stand up by itself it does not need any additional interfacing however if i was making the whole bag out of fabric I would definitely use my hefty on the main panel pieces. I mean, if you want your bag a bit squishy, you could also make it with fleece. Um, but the fluffier and fleecier it is, the more space you lose on the inside of it. And I'm all for interfacing when it's required. It's just not required for vinyl. If you were using a super lightweight vinyl, I would also interface it with the hefty. Or whatever you guys use. Decaville Light, I believe, is the American equivalent. Or something around there. Alright, look at us go. We're nearly done. We're going to grab our outside and turn it right sides out. So that we can just slot it into the bag. So now we want to think again. We want to think about where are the zippers ending. So the zippers are ending here. So our folded edge also wants to fold down and just slot in. So now all of my zippers will face the same way. So I'm going to start with this short bit and I'm going to clip it together. Now I did try doing this bag where I leave the seam allowance and then just go straight across. I did not find it super successful and I did not enjoy doing it that way, which is why I stitch all the way to the edge. You are welcome to try it that way if that works better for you. So what I mean is when we're sewing the, the gusset on, stay down you know three eighths of an inch or whatever and then just sew across from point to point i did it i didn't enjoy doing it it was a lot more fiddlier than this way so you're welcome to try it but it just wasn't for me that's why the pattern is the way it is so we're clipping everything i'm making the clips face the lining because I'm going to sew it like this, with the uh, lining right sides up. So because of that reason, I am making the clips face what will be the top, I guess. Making sure the zipper is tucked in. Sorry, I'm very used to just clipping on my lap. It's easier for my arms and stuff. So 
So I'm just moving my way along. And you can see a lot of the center points because we did center points of everything. So you could just line those up as well. That one goes to there. This one goes to there. All right. I feel like that's probably enough clips. So I've clipped all the way around and down. Now this and the top stitching are the trickiest parts of the bag as far as stitching is concerned. So I'm going to start up this end but not on the curve and start stitching around. So we want to go to adjoining stitch length. Stitch and back stitch. And then as we get to the curve, we want to try and make it a nice curve. And then I'm going to pull the bag and kind of squish it so I can get into here. I'm going to come down, needle down, pivot to go across that little short bit. Needle down and then pivot to come up the curve. We're moving, I'm going to trim off this tail because it's currently in my way. And then I'm just going to keep bringing the bag around. Like when I do when it's a 3D object, because it is, I guess. And it's just easier to see if I keep moving this down and out of my way. Whoa. And around, back to the start. And I'm just going to go check on that little short bit because it had a bit of a moment with my thread. So I'm just going to come back from the other side and just make sure that it's stitched because I can see where the issue happened. Oh, now I can hear a new issue. What is that? Right, no more videos with black thread. It is official. Not until I get a new spool. And I've still got quite a bit to go on this one. But that's alright, because I've got like 15 other colours. We'll be fine. Oh, that sounded much better. Cool. Right, so I've now stitched around everywhere. So I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm going to trim out the excess in the corners. Let me trim some and I'll show you. So I'm just trimming out this little bit in here so that it will turn easier and there's less bulk to fight when we top stitch. I'm going to come and do it to this side as well. So I'm cutting I'm essentially cutting like a big V chunk out of the corner so that it's easier to stitch. And I'm doing it to all four corners. So again, I'm using the end of the scissors and then I'm squishing it with my fingers so it's not hurting the rest of my hand. And then throwing it out. Cool! Back zipper pocket. And you can tell it's the back because that's where that is. You should just be able to put your hand straight in, except I did it up. Sounds like something I'd do. You can actually undo them from the outside. It used to be a lot more tricky for me. You just use your fingernail and kind of scratch it down. So I'm going to come in. Ooh, see that? I nearly turned that without trimming it. We definitely want to trim that down. It'll sit nicer if we do. We want to eliminate bulk from corners and that way you'll get it nicer. Right. Back in we go and I'm going to grab a bottom corner and I'm just going to push it in so that I can get a grip on it and then just 
pull it through. So the best way to turn a bag is kind of make it like a sausage. I'll show you what I'm doing in slow-mo. And then I'm going to pull the lining piece down like this so it's going to cover the entire bag. If you can get the whole bag within the lining, I promise from that point there, it will just turn super easy. So that's the hardest bit. If you can get this over the whole bag, you can then just basically pop it out. See? Like that. Look at all the cool colors. I know you guys saw it at the start of the video, but obviously I haven't seen it yet. I was just winging it. I like it. So I'm using my two fingers like this and I'm pushing along both of those seams to make sure they're pushed all the way out and looking lovely. And then I'm going to push the lining into the bag and pop up the zip. So this is for two reasons. One, to kind of roll out these corners. And two, because we want to make sure that we haven't missed anywhere. And this is a good place to check before we seal up the bag. So I'm just rolling out those corners to make sure that they look good. You also may need to put your hand back in and push them out. Depending on what vinyl you've used and how stubborn they're being. Of course, the last one's the most stubborn. It's always the way. Right, so I'm happy. I have no gaps. There's no bit of zipper kind of hanging out anywhere, except at the end where we need it to. So I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm just going to seal this shut. So I'm going to tuck it under, squish it down, stitch, back stitch, and stitch along. And backstage. We're very nearly finished, I promise. We've got two more lots of stitching. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to turn the bag inside out again. If you have a cylinder arm machine, you obviously don't have to do this because it's easy to top stitch around the cylinder arm. But we're going to turn it inside out so that we can stop top stitch on a flat machine. Because it's not very fair if I go cheat and use a whole different machine, is it? And saying that, this whole bag can be made on that machine. So, I'm just going to do a bit of a Tory squish along that top zip. Now the inside's looking real crunchy and wavy. Don't worry about that, it's just because we've shoved it in there. It's going to look fine when we're finished, a super duper promise. So I'm just rolling out all of the curves again, because we've just turned it inside out on itself again. You want those to look neat. So now I'm just going to top stitch. So I'm going to start here, which is just out from the corner and just before the big curve. So I want to start about here with my top stitching. I'm going to go up to a top stitching length. Um, if you want to change your top stitch colour, now is probably the time to do it. I'm just turning out this corner. It's been a little bit more stubborn than I was hoping for. So we're just going to come in and I'm going to do three stitches and then go through the first one and then I'm pulling to make sure everything under where I'm stitching is flat and I'm just going to slowly work my way along. Now obviously the flat bit is the quickest part. It gets a bit tricky in these corners because you're trying to roll them out. Ooh, what was that? I just touched something. Felt odd. Anyway, so we're going to continue around the curve and I'm squishing this whole bag down so that I can see what I'm doing in here. Then I'm going to pivot to go across that little short bit and I'm making sure that the D ring is down so it's out of my way. We don't want it in your way, obviously. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm going to continue going across. So I've kind of got to maneuver the corner. So what might help you, actually, now that I think about it, is a stiletto. So you can kind of dig it into the corner that's being stubborn, or the curve, it's not really a corner, and kind of dig it out so it'll sit flatter because it was being a bit of a jerk. Then we're going to bring the bag back around because we're almost to the flat bit again. And I'm just kind of using my fingernails to pull the teeth to make sure that everything's sitting flat. Again, this is why I have nails. So I'm just pulling out that corner so it's going to sit smoothly. The stiletto is actually a very big help. So we're going to stitch down. We're nearly back to the start. We're going to pivot to go across that short edge. Now because I'm nearly back to the start, I'm also going to trim my tails now so that they don't get stuck in my stitching. Because then you'll have like a big ball of mess and that's not what we want at all. So then again across the short edge. Now this is the end where all the zippers are. If they're in your way, just zip them to the other end. And then they're suddenly out of your way. Back to the start, go through two stitches and back stitch. Now we can turn the bag back the right way. And it's now all top stitched. Look at that. Ha ha! Last step, our final zipper. So I'm going to grab both of these and I always, out of habit, run my fingers along them. Even though I can see it's not twisted, it's just a habit I'm in. So no matter how long they are, I know they're not twisted. And I'm going to put one in halfway and then the other side in. Uh, no, that's crooked. You can see it on the end. If the zip doesn't line up even, it's crooked. There's no point in going any further. And sometimes it can just slip. All right, so you want to check and make sure that it's sitting nicely at this end, which it is. So then I'm going to take my tab. Now, if you've got those cool zipper ends, which I should probably get, you can just put a zipper end on here and Bob's your uncle. But I don't. So I'm going to put a fire engine red so that it's kind of matching in with the other fire engine stuff I've got going on. It's just like a nice accent. And then there'll be one at the top. Also what would look really cool with this bag is a red tassel. Since I'm recently tassel obsessed. Alright, so we're just going to slot that on. So it's in half in my hand but just not pressed together. And then I'm going to slot it onto the zip like that and press so the double-sided tape will hold it there for me. And so then I might actually start with the long edge. Three stitches and then back through the first one instead of the back stitching. We're going to move the clips because otherwise I'm going to knock them and we're going to move the bag around to here and stitch across and then up the side and then across and then to match in with our side crisscross I'm going to do the crisscross on here as well just because I want it to all look the same pretty much as why. So I'm going to trim off these tails because they're annoying me. Stitch along the bottom a second time and then back up on the angle like that. Just now so that it's the same as all the rest. Look at that. How cool is that? And then we just get our strap and attach it to the D-rings. So if you wanted less hardware, you could use rectangle rings on the side instead and then just directly attach your strap to the bag so it doesn't come off. 
Um, but I kind of like all that hardware look on this bag. Um, and as you can see at the back, it's not sitting super flat. That's because we need to come and squish it. So I'm going to roll it in my fingers until I'm right on that seam and then violently shake it back and forth to get a nice crease. And it should crease pretty easy because we don't have any interfacing in there trying to stop us. So you just have to do that to the whole bag and then it'll be done. You can use it or give it away or sell it or whatever you're doing. See there? That needs a good squishing. And it's always where this seam is that it gives you the most grief because it's the thickest. But it will come out, I promise. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Um, but the bag is done. And then you can zip them all up. So they're all the same. Uh, on my one, I have a tassel attached to this zipper here. So it's the one that I pull open and shut. Um, I love it. I'm not going to lie best decision of my life uh, but not everybody's into tassels so it won't come with one they can just ask for one if they want it so anyway guys that is how you make the floozy and i hope that that was helpful all right guys